Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So today's presentation is on Chinwa Achebe's The Madman, which is actually a short story. So let's get introduced to the author. Chinwa Achebe is a Nigerian novelist, poet and critic who is regarded as the dominant figure of modern African literature. He was famous for his novel, Things Fall Apart, published in 1958, which actually tells the story of an Igbo village's reaction to British missionaries and colonial authorities. According to The Guardian, he is the founding father of African fiction, whose novels chronicled Nigeria's troubled history since the very beginning of British colonial rule. He actually challenged traditional assumptions about the form and function of the novel. His refashioning of the English language to convey Igbo voices and concepts established a model and an inspiration for other novelists throughout the African continent. So the five novels and the short stories he published between 1958 and 1987 provide a chronicle of Nigeria's troubled history since the beginning of British colonial rule. So here, what do you think is the theme of this particular short story, The Madman? It includes the theme of struggle, determination, identity, conflict, appearance, and perception. Well, let's get into the glimpse of a few characters over. So the story is about a man called Waibe who has worked hard, long, and earned success. So Waibe, the protagonist, is a, uh, he rose higher as a man of wealth and integrity. He has a flourishing form. He has married two times, as is the custom, and has fathered many children. So his first wife is Megboy, a woman of peace. His second wife was Udenko, uh, who is junior to McBoy by three years, and she is actually a woman with provoking tongue. So there are two market days that comes in and around the short story. What are those? The first one is the FO, and the second one is EK. So here, uh, Ogbu is actually the town to which Waibe belongs. So here, hope you'd have got a glimpse about the characters. So what is Ozo in Igbo community? So these are certain uh, African terms that come across the text and I thought it would be better to give you an explanation outside the text. So the Ozo title is actually a status symbol in Igbo land. And it was taken by those who can afford it or who have relations or friends to sponsor them provided they are people of upright character and integrity and are respected throughout the community. So taking Ozo title is an honor among the Igbos, which enjoys great respect. So it is the highest honor in the land and it is a sign of wealth and pro prosperity. So the title taking event is actually typically organized with an abundance of yam, meat, uh, wine and other staple foods, all of which symbolize prosperity in Igbo culture. For an Igbo man to become Ozo title holder, he must be wealthy. So taking the Ozo title is an affair for the high and the mighty. The prestigious title is regulated by several rules and customs issued by the Igbo community. Well, so now let's uh, know something about the Ike market day and its importance. So uh, here in Igbo culture, there are four days in a week, namely Ekwo, Ike, Ofo, and Ori. Sorry if the pronunciation is wrong, right? So Efo means the formative market day, market day. And Ike market day is regarded as dangerous as such. Everyone is expected to be careful on this particular day. And uh, when it comes to the EK market day, it is significant and is regarded as the least favored day in most uh, Igbo communities. So activities are also constricted outside this day as it is a severance day. Uh, well, 
So now let's uh, look up into the bond between the market days and YB. So the story begins with a hint on a huge engulfing bazaar, beckoning people, family and strange from far and near. YB is wandering along the broad, black, mysterious highways which leads him to the market. Being a responsible and hardworking man, YB targets on, uh, uh, on the market days FO and EK to prove himself a worthy man of wealth and integrity. So before getting on to the EK market day, he had ample time to prove himself at FO. So now, uh, we are, the short story uh, gives us uh, glimpses of YB's fight with the women. So two fat women uh, picked up a fight with Waibe, claiming the market stock. At first, he fights with them, after which they brought with them their men for, right? So hope you understand the situation. So they were actually four men who were like hefty bees of the bush, who whipped him, I mean, he who whipped Waibe out of the hut. So after that, Waibe... Uh, he avoided staying there at night and instead went in the morning of the market day and returned back at dusk. So he didn't uh, stay there. He set out on the morning of the Iki market day through a long road with a basket of his belongings right on his head. So, you know, you know it takes around two days to reach the market. So as he was uh, walking along the road, little children threw stones at him. Right? This is the uh, second incident that's happening against uh, YB. So little children uh, were seen throwing stones at him, making fun of their mother's nakedness right? and not him. And uh, he didn't like it. And as he was walking along the middle of the road again, the driver of a mammy wa wagon and his mate picked up a fight with him. They pushed him and slapped him on his face. So after that, they said that the lorry nearly ran over their mother and not him. So all these weary incidents uh, confused Waiwei a lot and he had to be very, very careful. So now, uh, having a uh, looking into the character of Waiwei, who is a man of will and integrity. So uh, here we could see that having walked for one day and one night, he was getting closer to the Ike marketplace. On the way, he could see young ladies uh, walking with water pots on their head. After seeing that, he too feels thirsty. As he sees more water pots rising out of a sloping path at the side of the highway. So YB, the man of high standing in Obu, took a turn into the sloping footpath. All the men of the town has proposed for the honored title of Ozo as they wanted to seek admission into their honored hierarchy in the coming initiation season of the Ogo town. So you could see that uh, the Ozo title was very much uh, uh, in demand and uh, Waibe was very much curious and anxious to receive the title. So he, he, wanted, he was very uh, excited to receive the title. Right? So YB2 takes much interest in proposing for the Urza title. So the title men of the community appreciates his proposal, but with a hint, say they said, or they hinted that when we see, we shall believe. So it's not quite an easy stuff to receive the title, right? So Urza is not a child's naming ceremony, says the author, because the title requires YB to act accordingly with much caution. So as to get on through the selection process, yes? Well, so now let's have a glimpse into YB's family. So on that particular EK day, uh, YB wakes up early uh, to visit his farm nearby the street and to have a drink of palm wine with his peers and also to buy a bundle of roof thatch for repairing his wife's hut. He had changed the thatch roof of his hut to zinc and had thought of doing the same to McBoy's hut too with the remaining zinc. But he was very much afraid of the temperament of his second wife, Udenko. So he decided to do it together for both wives so that he won't be facing any kind of a problem from his second wife, uh, who is of a very short temperament. So McBoy was a woman of peace. His first wife was a woman of peace. Whereas Udenko was highly provoking 
as she always always picks up fights with the elder one so wooden comb picks up fight with meg boy for smacking her puppy look at the reason so meg boy on the other hand defends herself saying that see it is your puppy that put its mouth into my soup pot that's why i smacked him so why bay was listening to all the abuses of wooden comb so wooden comb was keeping on abusing meg boy and all of a sudden why bay got furious and shouts at meg boy to let him have peace that early morning so he even was scared to talk to denko just because uh, she used to shout so that the entire village may hear her so he was very much cautious and that's why he cautioned his first wife well so now uh, having finished uh, his works at the farm why be planned his journey towards the market so he decided to wash off his sweat at a little stream in the men's bathing section he put his clothes on a huge boulder and started bathing so there was nobody around since it was a market day he turned his face away out of modesty and started bathing as yb was so bathing a madman was actually watching him the madman was smiling at yb's nakedness why be noticed him and understands that this madman was the same hefty man who whipped him out of the hut at a food market along with other three men so why be further remembers that he was the same vagabond who descended from the lorry in the highway and pushed him down and slapped him so now why be again uh, he recollects that this man was the same fellow uh, who set his children to throw stones at him and laugh so now he becomes a little more tense uh, after recollecting all these uh, links that he had with the madman so now we could see that why he is trapped why he saw the madman laughing at his nakedness i have caught you naked said the madman why be grew furious and threatened that he will whip the madman so why be thought that the madman will be frightened at the appearance of whipping but the madman picked up the clothes of why be wrapped them around his waist and laughed at why be so why be got angry he got very much furious and started to chase the madman saying i will whip that madness out of you today so now why be ran all Uh, over the steep and rocky footpath to chase the madman why bay's vision blurred as he ran stumbled he stumbled he fell down and then pulled himself again shouting and cursing the madman the madman on the other hand ran swiftly as he did not waste his breath by shouting and uh, cursing how cunning you see right so why bay entered the highway in all his nakedness to catch hold of the madman why bay kept running vaguely aware of the crowd he tearfully pleaded the crowd without stopping so why bay was all in tears he said hold the madman so he was pleading to the public hold the madman he has got my cloth the sight of the madman was completely lost as the crowd actually gathered around yb bumping against the crowd he shouted coarsely stop the madman the crowd affirms yb to be the madman seeing his nakedness why did they assume that because it was yb who was completely uh, naked and he was running around the market place so they assume that yb is the madman and wonders how his family had left him and noticed so some of them even laughed at him and blamed his relations for not keeping a watch over their sick relation so by the time two men from yb's village spotted yb in the midst of the market place and we could see that even uden poor to spots him tear eye and wraps him in a cloth and leads him back home so now yb is taken to the medicine men for cure the relatives assumes him to be hit by a severe madness the first medicine man gives uh, the first medicine man gives no hopes blaming the relatives to have not kept him under watch he suspects yb to have come under the grip of spirits but the second doctor a very humble practitioner takes him into treatment and cures his madness got it 
So the humble doctor became famous overnight, but you could see that YB was not the mad one, right? So he just became furious and angry. That's all that happened. But just because of his nakedness, he was assumed to be the mad man. And so you could see here, the humble doctor became, over, uh, became famous overnight just because he treated and cured his madness. So why they became quiet and withdrawn from the boisterous life of the people soon after the incident. So, so he was uh, claimed uh, him to be, uh, they claimed that he was uh, cured from the madness. He was actually withdrawn and he became very much quiet, right? So after two years, after two long years, during the initiation season again, Waibe makes an inquiry of proposing to the titled men of his community for the Ozo title. So he was still uh, fighting within to uh, claim the title, Ozo title, which was uh, very much a kind of a prestigious award to the men of Igbo community. So, but to this, to back to his dismay, uh, those Ozo men, dignified and polite as they were, deftly they steered the conversation away to other matters. So it is understood that uh, the dignified men of the Ozo, uh, of the oh, titled Ozo men, they didn't even want to listen to the uh, proposal made by Waibe, and they just uh, diverted the topic. Uh, uh, say uh, indirectly saying that you aren't fit for the Ozo title just because of the madness that you exhibited a few years back. So now we could say that uh, we could see that the highly ambitious Waibe uh, is now uh, he has now met his futile end because uh, he couldn't uh, uh, get on to his ambition. Got it? So uh, this is the short story, The Madman by uh, Chinwa Achibi. So thanks for watching and I mean thanks for listening and those who haven't subscribed it, do subscribe and watch and do not forget to like the video. Uh, and uh, uh, this is Wahida signing off.